me book is back is something we don't really want to say. Reason being that since 2020 when the fall of Boyu occurred, it doesn't seem that they'll ever get back the market share they lost. Those days are gone. So we'll have to take this at face value. This is a good unit. A very good unit. This is the Mi Book 103. It's got Google Play, it's got everything you need out of the box, especially with having Wacom technology. What type of device is this? This is considered an eNote. An eNote is a device that is primarily used for note-taking purposes, be it Wacom, active capacitive, or other. But since there's no time like the present, let's dive in to the Mi Book 103. In terms of the build quality, this is the best e-reader the company has ever made. This is gorgeous and they are branching out of the cookie cutter slab design that everyone is sticking to and they have done something pretty spectacular. This is as good as devices are going to look. Complementary colors with this light gray clay with this also very nicely beveled gunmetal that surrounds the entire unit and does supply a little bit of a height difference between the flush screen and bezel and the device's outer bezel as to protect the front if it is laying flat. You also get an SD card which we had pre-opened because it's kind of hard to open. On the back it is a very nice gunmetal as well. The back is plastic, the side is aluminum which is very nice. The top is mostly clean except for the power button with the status indicator light. The right side is clean, the left side has that SD and everything happens at the bottom here. This is where you're going to get your microphones, your USB-C and your stereo speakers. This thing is gorgeously built with a landscape biased side bezel right here this kind of ledger handle and a lot of people always ask why they have that is because that's how you take notes if it was like this you would have no way to hold the unit with your hand by the time you would hold the edge to get away from the screen interaction you're teetering on the precipice of almost dropping it that's why they have this it's it's completely usable it's utilitarian now there's something else that is extremely important to mention MeBook has an all new pen. And guess what? It's Wacom doing away with that terrible active capacitive battery powered nonsense they had on the last generation. And it actually says right on there, stylus pen. They're, they're not playing any games. You have an eraser at the back that is very rewarding to press down and you have some proprietary tips. Unfortunately, they're not the traditional Wacom tips you'll find on remarkable units, etc. The whole thing is plastic, but it has a nice double gunmetal different shades I might add this one is a little bit more metallic and this is a little bit more matte and you have a very nice line to the unit that is very flat on one side so you can actually choose where to put your finger and get a different pen feel every step of the way. We do have to weigh all of these because weight of devices is at the forefront of a lot of people's minds. So if we weigh the device itself we are coming in at 431 grams and that is compared to around 200 for an ebook reader. A traditional stylus comes in at 13 grams and their new stylus comes in at 13 grams right on the money. You're going to find some heavier pens that are a little bit of an anomaly like the DPT pen that's going to be a little bit heavier because it has a battery in it but for something that is passive and is just a Wacom pen very on point when it comes to the weight. The unit actually starts you off by making you choose minimalist display or standard display. If you do one or the other you lack one or the other. This is heavily icon based, this is heavily interacted with kind of the individual things. So the last thing you've opened, the book cover art of the respective book, etc. You also get desktop full refresh mode and set home screen, etc. We'll keep on settings here just for a second because we want to show you something very interesting is that device settings still makes you enable Google Framework in order to use Google Frame. So unlike some BigMe products and some Onyx products where they have it integrated into the unit, they do still make you turn it on on the MeBook, but that's neither here nor there. It still works. You have the top drop down here with the oh so important e ink center basically and this is going to be your regal mode, your normal mode, your fast mode or your top speed mode. You can also enable grayscale 256 to display in global mode. There's no reason to turn that off. It was kind of there to add more settings and more features to ebook readers, but it comes at no detriment. It doesn't use any additional battery and it makes the thing 
that you are looking at better in every conceivable way. We are not sure why it is still a toggle even after a couple years, maybe three years now, but it is still there if you want to turn it off or on respectively. Normal mode is going to be your balanced and fast mode and top speed mode will show you in a little bit when we show you videos, but this is basically the home screen. You have notepad, read, bookstore, and app. App is going to be your traditional list of applications, including Google Play. Notepad is going to be where you take all of your notes. There's some coloring books and some sticker sheets sheets and stuff like that and bookstore is going to take you to the actual bookstore you have to sign into wi-fi to get to there but honestly it's just a lot of chinese content and public domain stuff so i would just recommend using google books because play books is actually a very high quality experience you get manga you get the latest possible editorials, the latest possible magazines, newspapers, top selling books, everything in Google Play Books. I really wouldn't recommend too many stores outside of that, but you can sideload in Amazon, you can sideload in Barnes and Noble and Kobo and whatever ecosystem you'd like. Yes, the reading experience is only going to be as good as the app you're using. You can use Adobe Acrobat, you can use Aldico, you can do Moon Plus Reader. There's going to be no shortage of applications because this is Android, this has Google Play Books, this has Google Play, so you can download any app you want. So it's really gonna come down to what you download, but the stock reading experience is as follows. It looks great, but I will notice one thing is that this is a case of the screen being quite far away from you. There's a tremendous gap between the outside bezel and the screen itself, and it's leaving a drop shadow around the whole thing. You can, however, take notes on the unit itself, so you can circle things, you can erase things like that. It's all very fast and very speedy, and it's quite nice. You can also interact with your fingertip and go through the normal long press scenario where you get things like find on the web, find in book, leave a note, leave a comment, leave a type something in, basically whatever you want. You can copy it, you can leave a sticky note as well. So basically from here, it opens up the keyboard and you can write something and say, okay, there's my annotation. You can delete it, you can save it, you can do whatever you want with it, and you can find it later in the list of annotations. Overall, it's not a terrible reading experience. I just really would have liked the screen to be a little bit more surface, but that comes with the territory of having all these different layers in front of everything. The touch digitizer, the Wacom digitizer, the glow light, the top coat, the top glass. There's a lot of factors at play that push the actual display further and further away nowadays, which is why things like a Fujitsu and a Remarkable, they look so good because they're in your face. You can change the font here and you can go to the secondary menu, in which case you get a slider bar to make it as big as you want. So they give you a lot of options there. You can italicize and bold everything and you still get interrupted with nice little page pictures like that. So the reading experience, this unit is more than capable of handling it. If you need a little bit more boost of speed in between your page turns, go back to that e-ink center, go to top speed mode, and now you can fly through the book very, very quickly. You get a lot of staining, but you'll have to force a refresh in order to get rid of that. And you have a force refresh button at the top there to get rid of the background ghosting. I haven't drawn more than one or two lines on this unit so far, so I'm hopeful that it is going to be a solid experience, but I'm a little bit weary because although this is a nice looking pen, it's very wobbly, it's plastic, it feels, it feels kind of cheap, kind of cheap. So we'll see what we got here. The eraser was hit or miss, and the pen tip is a little bit plasticky. You kind of lose that graphite composite, kind of almost a grittiness you lose with this pen. It is Wacom, and to their advantage, you can use any pen on the market. You can use the Amazon Kindle Scribe, which actually feels a lot better than this pen. So the pen that comes with it is not all that great, although looks quite nice. I would actually recommend getting this unit because it is so capable and looks great, but maybe getting another pen, like maybe an Amazon Premium Stylus or something, or an Onyx Books pen, because those would be a better match than this. I just kind of feel like they give this to you as a courtesy, not so much as the primary writing tool, but that's neither here nor there. Let's check out what the device can do. So we can open up this drop down on the side here, and if I'm not mistaken, 
Okay, the hitbox is a little bit different on that side element versus using your fingertip. The fingertip seems to employ a larger hitbox than the pen itself, so that's very interesting. Now, you'll notice that the palette is pretty much missing. Now, a lot of it has to go with this part right here, and this is where the insert page, shape, text, and image is going to be. So, image is pretty straightforward. You insert an image into the equation, and shape is going to be a shape. So, if I choose a square, I can draw a square in the middle of the page, and it makes a square, but it is heavily lacking the primary features of an onyx or a big me where you have different dotted lines and different thicknesses and different colors and different shades none of that's there you just have a square and a circle and a triangle granted all of this can be changed via a software update but out of the box they don't give you a whole lot of options the palette down below you get a few more things you get different pens different thicknesses and you can change the line width as well as deal with 10 different colors now you have to be aware that these different colors are only going to show up obviously when you export this because this is black and white so you only get black white and some shades of gray now there's going to be a tremendous amount of overlap for example blue and purple look identical yellow and gray look identical so what that means is if i choose purple and i draw on the screen that's purple 100 percent when i export this this is going to be purple but you don't see it during the moment so if you get a little bit confused and maybe say okay i know that's purple and this is going to be my blue and then you say oh wait a minute which one's which you'll only know when you export it because there's not a live interpretation of what's going on because this doesn't have a color screen so it has no way of telling you what color is which other than shades of gray which get a little bit convoluted because they're so similar you do have paintbrush you have marker you have ballpoint pen i would like to see truthfully if this has any tilt capabilities because it does have the pencil it does not have any tilt capabilities but it does have pressure sensitivity so you won't be able to get any tilt dusting on this like you will with a kindle scribe for example so that's a little bit out you do have different ways to change your eraser as well you have normal erase you have different sizes you have area erase and you have erase all you can also move that palette to the other side of the screen as well and if we click on this finally these are your last settings you have paper switch delete this page select group etc paper switch is going to be your backdrop in which they do actually have a great deal of backdrops and technically because you can sideload in any content into this you can download sony and fujitsu pdf packs and put them on here all day long that's going to be quite nice honestly outside of that you only have this one last option which is share and export what it's going to do is after you choose the page you want to share you click share it's going to go through your unit and see all of the apps that you have on here in order to share it via gmail outlook WhatsApp, etc. Now the downside is that, although that's really cool, the downside is that there's, there's not a whole lot of settings on this. This is actually harking back to the Fujitsu first gen where the amount of palette settings and the amount of secondary and tertiary settings is actually quite dry. There's not a whole lot you can do with this unit. And you know what? The touch boxes are pretty inconsistent in both our testing and right now live. You do have insert new page and you can do a ton of pages and this has more than enough storage to put as much as you want on here and multiple pages and SD card storage and cloud storage. And that's all well and good. But honestly, when it comes down to it, this is severely lacking when it comes to the note-taking functionality. MiBook 103 is the best unit the company has ever made since the Likebook Alita from yesteryear. This is a culmination of everything the company has stood for for so long, doing away with that absolutely dreadful active capacitive battery power technology and moving into the 31st century with the global standard of Wacom. This makes this a viable choice. As it stands, the note-taking experience is awful and the pen is plasticky and cheap, so it gets a 6 out of 10. Although this is one of the best units they've made in a long time, their track record is spotty and their devices have been all over the map with very little consistency. If you want to grab one of these, details are down below.